Yeah, we're talking about design systems and, of course, how to survive them. What What is a design system? Let's say, um, let's understand if you ever found yourself in your, uh, wherever you're working, in this situation. Okay, so you are in a situation and um, you've got 14 competing standards. Imagine you have 14 competing standards for the uh, drop down, for the button, for whatever it is. And, and then you meet with the team, and uh, with the team you understand that 14 is ridiculous. Okay, so you, we, we have to do something. And then you work hard, and then what happens, you've got 15 competing standards. So this is, this is what happens. This is how standards proliferate. And this is where um, design systems come in. Or better, it is where uh, style guides before and uh, design um, uh, and component uh, libraries came before that. And um, this is what we are trying to uh, solve with design system and try to talk about today. Um, so what is a design system? It's nothing of the things you read there. Um, it's not a plane and it's not a bird. And it's not just uh, design. It's just, just a, not not a component library. It's not just a, a style guide. It's not just a series of UI icons or or pieces. It's a mixture of things, and it's something uh, a lot more complex uh, than that. And we'll see what it is. But um, uh, if you're really curious, um, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so I know you're curious, like these two people, so I'm going to tell you what it is. So it is a series of things. So it is a series of um, um, style uh, information, uh, UI components, code components, and more. With more, I mean um, you have uh, documentation. Uh, you can have um, uh, design rules. Um, you can have a tone of voice. You've got many things that describe a design system. And but most of all, a design system is something that, it, that a normal design library uh, is not. It's something that you can reach wherever you are. And everybody can see and reach and you know, take things from. It's not on someone else, uh, someone's computer, it's not m hidden anywhere, it's transparent, it's there, the whole team and the whole organization knows where to find it. And this is very, very important, because everybody has to have the, the view on the, on, the, on the system, and we'll see even why. So this is a situation, it's, it's a, um, I'm sure you've lived this so many times. So you've, you're working on something, and, and, and you're reaching a page or something that you have to treat some, somehow, and um, like, I don't know, if there's a search um, box and you say, how do, how do I treat this? Where do I find the icons? Or uh, there is an error message and how do I tr write this error message? What tone do I use? What graphic do I use? And where do I find the icons? So, because you, do, you, you never know, you've done this thing um, millions of times, you solve these problems millions of times, but you're trying to solve the thing again, every time. And moreover, a design system is a collection of tried and tested solutions. You never, you never take something that you had an idea overnight and think is wonderful and put it inside your organization's design system. You never do that because you have to test it. You have to test it with your users, you have to test it with your organization's goals, you have to test it and see if it works, if it brings value to what you're building. Otherwise, it's useless. So it's something that you've tried, maybe in a project, maybe in a product, and um, it works, it solves the problem, it works bri brilliantly, so you put it inside the design system. And a design system is an open product. It's not a project. It's not something that you build and you leave there. It's something that um, it's open to everybody to uh, contribute. Um, it's something that needs uh, a product life cycle. You, you, you design it, and when you design it and you publish it, that's not the apex of the thing. That's the starting point. So whenever you are uh, designing a design system and you publish it for the first time, that's the start of the journey. 
is not the ending point. Okay? And it cannot be a side project, because if it's a side project, it will be uh, forgotten in uh, six months' time, nobody will use it, and, uh, and you've wasted time and money. And it is something, it's a, it's a, little, it's a little animal. Okay? You have to feed it with new information, you have to make it grow, and it's evolving. It's not something that you build once and stays there, or you just do small adjustments. It's something that evolves with your company, evolves with your, with your way of doing things, evolves with your ideas, with your goals. Uh, you have an organization, the goals change, so does the design system. Otherwise, it doesn't respond to what you have to do with it. Okay? So, normally, what happens is everybody should participate, but there must be at least one person that says yes and no to the various things. Otherwise, democracy is good, but it's, you know, it, can be, it can be really tricky if everybody can decide. Okay? So, there must be one curator, uh, the, let's say the head of curators, and that does this. Okay? So, let's go straight into some easy examples, so we know what we're talking about. And um, uh, we're not going into too much detail because you will see the, uh, the link and I'm sure you will be curious to see what we are talking about in detail. A design system, or the design system we are talking about today um, and the examples are really complex, really rich. And what I wanted to show is just um, um, the complexity that this can reach. Okay, this, this design system can be really complex. But we start with something simple. Uh, this is a really nice example of a design system. Um, it's, um, Lego had a, a problem. They uh, wanted to build toys. Okay? They wanted to build toys and they wanted the toys um, to be entertaining, uh, not just when you were playing with it, but when you, were, you, know, uh, you received something and they wanted you to use your imagination. And they started with wooden toys, but um, you know, with two or three wooden parts that could be attached to the toy. Then they evolved the idea of the single elements, so the single components. And the single components became what we see here, and then of course it evolved and evolved. It's still evolving today. So it's a design system that is still evolving today. But how do they do it? They have some base pieces, um, and they have uh, a pattern. And they use that to create the uh, different pieces. And the more they evolve, the more the needs evolve. Imagine when they started doing the Star Wars uh, pieces, um, they had to um, develop new pieces. They had to develop new functions because they didn't have it. So they started developing new pieces, but those pieces are good for 10, 20 projects, not just one. Okay. And this is you know, just an, an example. And once they solved one of these problems, because each, each of these was a problem they had to solve. How do we uh, turn things? How do we have a little circle of thing because I need to build something? And every time they will encounter the same problem, they will use the same element. Okay? This is really important. Uh, this is the, a very big one. <laughs> okay, this is um, how Atlassian... Um, build their design system. And it's, it's like really complex, I'm not going into the real detail, but what I want to point out is how many things are inside this design system. And we're not even scrolling down, but imagine we're talking about brand, we're talking about marketing, we're talking about products, and in product we see the foundation, the components, the patterns, patterns meaning you know the error patterns or the login patterns or whatever. And then we have the, de the design principles that are really important. Whenever you're building a design system, your design principles have to be really clear. And your organization goal, why you're building the design system, have to be really clear. Otherwise, you're building something for what? You have to have a reason. You're not building something for a, you know, to build just a wonderful UI. You have to build a very good user experience for your users and your brand. So the design principles could be clarity. I want everything that I design to be clear to the user. Okay, that's something that I will pursue. Everything I will design will pursue that uh, design principle. And then we have, we have many more things, and they are talking about things, and they are really detailed in everything that they show. And, and this is one of the things, the things I was talking about before. Um, we even have 
writing style. So imagine the design system is something that is, um, uh, it's the way your brand is trying to communicate everything it does. And in this, uh, here we see how uh, the, the tone of voice should be. Um, um, uh, a user does an, an error, goes into a wrong page, or doesn't insert all the data in a form, uh, you can decide how to respond to that. And that is part of how you express your brand towards the user, and how you want to, your, your brand to be, to be perceived. So that's part of your marketing strategy. Okay, so then we have a plethora of things. So we have buttons, badges, whatever. So it's all part of, of the design system. This is quite complex. So we won't. Another one is Firefox, and uh, this is another really famous one. And as you can see here, um, we have the principles, uh, as I was saying before. So it's, it should be adaptable. It should be quick. Uh, it should be approachable. Everything that we know that Firefox. Become to, became to be, okay? But then what we see there in the principles, um, it's designed for scale. So why are we doing this design system? Because we want to be able to scale. We want to be able to, you know, not having the same questions all over and over again. We have to have some elements that can, that can be used for all our products and for all the life cycle. And then, um, you know, their, their principles are designed for performance, so everything they will design will have to be quick, responsive, and, and you know, it's, it's part of their uh, DNA. And then design for inclusion, that's one of the main Firefox uh, design principles. Um, this is another part, um, how they, this is a, 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 um, an example of how they treat um, errors, and this is part of what they are uh, saying to the design system, and a lot more. Okay, some of, thing, some of the things are still in draft, but they are published. So users can get into the thing and leave feedback, use it and leave feedback if they want to. Are we okay until here? <laughs> okay. Anybody seen the, this movie? Um, um, so why am, am I designing a design system? It doesn't clean the floors anyway, but it's it's got some benefits. Okay, so uh, a design system is 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 put in place so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You solve the problem once; it worked. Um, your users loved it. Your um, your company uh, was really happy with you know with uh, how it worked for the product or the project. So it's there. Use it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You have a drop-down that works beautifully for what you need to do. Use that. Okay. One thing that designers, I'm a designer, um, um, fear about the design systems is, is that they will, it will limit their, their freedom in, in doing new things. But it's not true. A design system is in place to do the heavy lifting. Okay, a design system is there to help you deal with everyday problems. So the designers, the real clever ones, can um, uh, invent new things for new challenges. But the baseline is already covered. And of course, if you have to sell a design system to your um, head of the company, or you have to, you know, to talk about it and put it in place and put some budget on it, how do you do that? Um, you know, you just say, yeah, it will help us build things faster, so everything will be cheaper. And the word cheaper is something that always has some, some nice resonance with the higher levels. And of course, it, it will let you build things faster because you have everything you need to start building anything. And you may find some new challenges in new projects, but, you know, all the basic parts are all solved for you. And this is important, it improves communication a lot. So imagine you are a designer and a, and a developer, normally are in two silos, in two different, really different parts of the same company. Uh, sometimes they talk, but about something that is nothing to do with work. Um, they talk at coffee time, and maybe they talk about something else during a, a project. But they never express themselves at, at the, in, in the same way. So. Um, me as a designer, if I go to a programmer and I say, well, I'd like to have uh, something that works like this, uh, this, 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 this I, I know what I'm meaning, I know what I want, I, I, I visualize things. 
the programmer is not really good in, at visualizing. It's not, it's not something that is bad about the programmer. I know nothing about code, so it, no, it's, it, it, it works. We work together, but we can communicate. So imagine having something common, so we can talk about something that we can see and um, discuss over. So it improves communication because we are talking about an element that we can see, that we, that we can if, if we have to modify something, it's there, it's, it's a library, and we are talking about something that we know. So if I'm, uh, imagine uh, the, the, device, the development team needs to build a page, I'm not there because I'm here today, and I need to build it. What happens? If, I, if we have a 10 minutes call and I say, it needs to have this, this and this element, they have it, they can build it without me, okay? And the handoff is, uh, is quite clear. When I'm passing something over, even if it's just a sketch, and in the sketch I've just drawn a uh, dropdown, they know what to use. They know what dropdown I'm talking about because it's in the design system. And if you have diverse, two teams or three teams working on the same project, um, sometimes they come up with three different solutions. And if you have a design system in place, this doesn't happen. And then it's scalable. Uh, we talked about it before. Uh, it helps you a lot scaling products because, well, ooh, scared? Not at all. Okay. So one other important thing is we have a lot of uh, design systems that are already in place. Somebody else invented them, and why don't we all use it? Why don't we use material design, all of us today, for our project? But you know, like ever tried with feather pants? It's, it's pants, but it's not the same size. It's not the same style. Maybe it's 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 outdated. Outdated is a nice word for this thing. And so why we're not using it? Because another brand's design system might not solve your needs. Okay, so it solves Google material. Talking about material design, it solves Google problems quite well. But are we sure it's solving your problems? Are we sure it's going in your direction? Are we sure uh, you love the floating button? I don't. But are you sure you love you know, things Google designed for himself? And another thing is, uh, not all your products may fit in the same design system. You may have a design system that works beautifully for products uh, meant for the pharmaceutical um, uh, brand, um, the pharmaceutical you know, business unit, but then uh, it doesn't work for um, uh, another business unit that you have in your business. Um, and you have to build a design system for what you need to build. So if you have a design system, don't feel forced to use it on every product, because maybe not all the products are, um, can be you know, um, reworked with that design system. And then Google and products and material design, a never-ending story. They, um, material design came out five years ago, and still today, there are a lot of Google um, softwares that are not using material design. Why? Because it's, it's difficult even for them to use their material design on their products. Because not, uh, you know, not all design systems fit every product. And then you have this wonderful material design, and you're, you've got all the components, and you're looking for things to solve. But maybe you don't solve any, you need to solve anything. So when, you have, when all you have is material design, everything looks like Gmail. So you need to focus on what you really need. OK? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Did you see all the bewares there? OK. <laughs> um, how to build a design system. Uh, there's one way there. Um, but if you haven't got the force, uh, what you need, first of all, is understand, um, you know, have a team. Have someone that does this, OK? So we can have team models. Um, you can have a solitary team model. Um, we have three team models. We'll, we'll see them. It's one team that develops the design system for what they need. Okay, it's a closed thing. So it's a team working on a project and they build their design system. Maybe one, in, in, in a, you know, during the lifetime they will share it with other teams, but for now they're using it for their product. And the, their product will go on with that design system. Then there's a centralized um, team model. So it's a, it's a team that what does, it, they, they do it for, a, for, a, for their job is to design and maintain the design system for the whole organization. 
and for the, for the other teams. And then we have the federated team model. So people from multiple product teams or teams inside the organization um, work together to build the best design system possible. And they're bringing to the table all the experience from different kinds of, uh, you know, different parts of the company. And that's the best part, the best thing, because you've got ideas, you've got feedbacks, you've got, you know, all the things you need to build the perfect design system. And the best team is this one. Um, imagine having this team, apart from Hulk, that is a bit daunting there, but it's um, um, all these people, everybody has a different skill. And all these, if all these people uh, wanted to build one design system, they would build the perfect design system because they have mm, different skills, different experience, and different uh, way, um, points of views. Um, and there are two, ma two main ways to build a design system. You can start from scratch, you've got nothing, um, or everything that you designed until now is rubbish, or you're starting a new brand. You're starting a new brand, so you say, well, let's build a design system. Um, what you do is start small. You start with something, some elements, that in your project are very valuable. Imagine your mm, project has got a lot of forms, let's say, you start from that building the, the form, one form. That works, you have to test it. You have to test it with users, you have to test it internally. If it works, you promote it. And then you pass it, you know, you, you go on with another little piece. You never boil the ocean overnight, okay? So you have to start small and build small pieces and test them and validate them piece by piece. Or you've got some products that have been successful. What do you do? is see if some of the things you already designed um, are useful for your design system. So it, they, they have they proved to be wonderfully um, useful, and um, they, um, the users thought they were wonderful. Why not? You can promote them to your design system. Um, and one um, advice I can give you is um, whenever you have a design system, try always. Um, to have design versioning. So you know that what you're designing is aligned with the code. Of course, the design system is a mixture of code and design, but try always to be aligned. So a programmer that has got his version on GitHub or whatever knows what, what piece of uh, UI or interaction to use. Okay. Remember, a design system is a product. It's, it's got the life cycle of a product. So it's not, as we said before, you need to do your research. You need to know your users. You have to um, put in the same room the stakeholders, the designers, the product leaders. You have to talk about it. You have to understand what you need to solve. You have to understand what your goal is. You have to understand the product 100%. And then you have to build your design principles, uh, as, we, uh, as we've seen before. So what are your design principles? I want the UI to be beautiful. Okay, that's one design principle. But then, um, do you want it to be accessible? Do you want it to be usable? Do you want it to be uh, inclusive, like we said before, we saw before? And your design principles have to be really clear for everybody. Okay. So the designer, when starts building the design system, has got some basic rules and clear shared goal, of course, as we said before. And this helps you building the best system possible then it's up to you. And it's really important that you think about accessibility and usability while you're building your system. Not after, not when the system is in place, because when the system is in place, it's too late. You can do it, but it's not the best practice. Imagine um, baking a muffin with the blueberries inside. It, it's, it's a wonderful muffin. Imagine baking a muffin without the blueberries and trying to stick them inside after you've baken it. It's not the same thing. It's a blueberry muffin, but it's all broken, okay? So, um, the thing is, if you build a design system with accessibility and usability uh, in place, when you build something, it's already accessible and usable. And uh, one important thing is, you never want to add something to a design system that has never been tested. Never ever, because um, it can break something, it can break everything, <laughs> or... Um, it's just unusable, 
or you know, uh, renders the whole design system uh, a bad design system. So uh, you never add you know, a new ingredient for your most important evening uh, dinner uh, with a new guest. Even if you know, really know, if you really know the recipe, but you don't know the ingredients and how it will interact with, all the, with the rest of the ingredients. Look at his face. <coughs> and you have to document everything that you decide. Everything that you want the thing to do, it has to be documented. You have to document even the whys. Not just how it works, but why. Why did I choose that? So everybody, even um, in a year's time, uh, new people come to your organization, they can read the document and understand, really understand the design system, understand the choices, understand how it works and why. So the new designs will be aligned uh, with the uh, uh, design system. <laughs> okay, this is another thing to remember, really important. <coughs> um, what are the tools that I need? Well, here the, the tools are, uh, there are a lot of tools. Um, the major thing is it has to be something in the cloud or easily reachable by any, everybody. So we're talking about documentation. We're talking about uh, code snippets or code components or UI components. You have to find somewhere or some um, tool to, you know, to put them all together. So. Uh, imagine we have, we can have a long list here, but it's, it's just a, a list of things we use uh, inside our organization. And so this is you know, how we do it. Um, if you know Figma, Sketch are nearly the same thing, just Figma is on the cloud and it can be usable to, to you know, uh, PC users like I am. Oh yes, I'm a, I'm, a, um, <laughs> I'm a creative and I use a PC, I know, it's a shame. Or you can use a sketch, you can, you know, whatever. It has to be a tool that um, allows other people to contribute, to give feedback, to say something about it, okay? And find the elements. And this is the big, the big thing. Um, if you're building a design system, the last thing you want to do is let it rot into a room or something. You have to groom it, you have to let it grow, you have to you know, um, feed it somehow. Otherwise, it will belong to another space-time continuum, and and your organization is in the future, and the, and the design system in, in, is in the past. Uh, as a you know, as a as a style uh, point of, from a stylistic point of view, from a coding point of view, um, from whatever. And if it stays there, nobody will will use it anymore. And you've spent time and the money for something that in one year's time nobody is using. And that's really bad. So how to maintain a design system? Easy. You, you just need one, one to one gigawatts of power. And you go into the future, and so you can bring the design system with you. Or this is, these are the rules to make the uh, design system really work. And be maintained. So you have to collaborate and communicate. What, what does it mean? Um, uh, the design system is in place, um, but you need feedback. You need to talk to the people that are using it because it's designed, but as I said before, it's just a start. So you have to communicate, see, understand if it's in place and it's good, if there are things that can be bettered, always there are always things that can be bettered. If, it, uh, if it's perceived at the same way at all levels, and if it's not, why? And you have to start uh, talking a lot between designers, developers, PMs, and whoever is in charge of the product. If you don't do that, the design system won't be um, acknowledged, uh, used, and, and it won't be backed by, if it's not backed by anybody, no, anybody nobody will use it. And then you have to incentivize adoption, adoption and use. How do you do that? You lower friction. So it means, your design system need, needs to do the things um, um, designers and developers were doing until yesterday in a better way, in an easier way. If it's not like that, they will still be using their ways of doing things. Okay, so you have to help them use it. You have to lower friction. And then you have to promote ownership. What does it mean? It means that the design system is not something I built. It's not something uh, that developer built. 
the design system is owned by everybody in the organization. And I mean everybody. So we have to promote this idea of everybody can say something about it. Everybody can, is heard. It's not just that you say something and I say, oh yes, yes, it's a good idea, and then I walk away. But it's, there's a place where I can insert my idea and it stays there, and it's, and it's read by someone, and it's discussed, if it's a valuable idea, of course. And even the responsibility is shared. That component or that thing that we agreed is not working. So it's, everybody is responsible. That doesn't mean I have to you know, whip someone, but we have to acknowledge it and understand why build a better one and move forward. Okay? But it's everybody's respons responsibility if that doesn't work because we talked about it, because we had you know, a solution that was agreed by everybody. And then the most important thing is you have to accept new solutions. Imagine that you've built a, a design system and you're really proud of it. I mean, oh, it's the best one. But then something happens. Um, in, the, in the life cycle of the design system, um, you understand that the users don't like that, don't use it, or it's not exactly what your platform needs, but you love it, and you won't change it. That's a, that's a big mistake. If it doesn't work, and it doesn't bring value to the platform, you have to rethink it. You have to be humble enough to um, discard it in favor of a new one that works better. Okay? It's not yours, even if you designed it, it's for the better of the platform. Uh, so accept new proven solutions, discarding old ones if they don't work anymore. And if the, if the new one works best. And leave the ego at home, it's the same thing. So yes, uh, I'm really happy because mine is better. But no, you're designing for uh, your users, you're designing for your organization. You're not designing for pride of the icon. So don't fall in love with what you're, what you're designing because it won't last, ultimately. Something new will come out, some new uh, solutions, and you have to embrace them, and you have to be ready to embrace them. And then repeat, because this is a product. So go on with this every time. And uh, it takes time, it takes money. Um, it's not something... Um, you, you, you have to um, have someone that... Part of his job is maintaining this design system. Otherwise, it will die easily. Um, and yes, of course, you have to look at the design system as a uh, product, because it is. It's a product serving your products, or your projects, or your brand. Okay, so you may have built a design system to better uh, show what your brand can do, and, or what your brand is, and you have to um, treat the design system as your main product. Okay. So, uh, this, is, this is it. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, is there any question? Curiosity? There. Not a difficult one, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, it's not a surprise that uh, a design guy is pushing for developing a design system, right? like we should not use material or anything like that and do around stuff. And I'm a developer and I would always think like it's a bad way to go and we should keep on using the same things as most people is using. And actually last year we made a decision to stop using material and go with our own design system. I was afraid but we made this decision because it was actually hard to fit uh, or need with material as you said, not the right size, right? So it's uh, the best thing I could say to you today, not to use material design. No, yeah, but it's, it's actually a message to developers because yeah. I guess developers are not surprised to hear you plea, uh, making this plea for, for going for your own system. Mm -hmm. And as a developer, I want to say that was a brilliant solution, brilliant decision to do that. I'm so happy with my design system. Great. It's not that painful to maintain by ourselves. We are doing exactly what we need. It's a small effort to maintain it. And 
we use it everywhere, and that's such a comfortable situation. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, developers, don't be afraid, go for that. Yeah, and I really love what you said. It's um, our design system is small. It doesn't have to be as complicated as we saw. It can be as small as you need it to be. And sometimes, if you've if you, if you've seen the the history of the Slack design system, if you ever tried to see how how it worked, they started with like. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but like uh, 100 colors, different colors. Now they have six. So th what, what they did was simplify, 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 and, and with the feedback of the users, understand what they really need, what, they, what were the core uh, elements. Now the design system is really small, and it's Slack. Okay, it's not... Uh, it's not my little software in the, in the bedroom, is, you know. And, and what they did was simplify it uh, to make it maintainable, but to make it even easier for the people to build new things so they have lesser elements, but only the ones they really need. So I really like that. Thank you. Any other question? Anything? I want a beer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Lorenzo, again. Thank you. Thank you.